الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد some of the signs of ahl bid'ah wal firqa the people who divide the religion and the people who innovate and add new belief systems and new ways of doing things which contradict the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the methodology of the Salaf al-Salih رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين. So some of the characteristics of the people who deviate in the religion. One of the first characteristics is that when it comes to the evidence, so you'll find these characteristics are the traits which are the opposite of Ahl Sunnah. The first being that the people of of uh, division and sectarianism that they avoid and disregard the evidences of the Quran and the Sunnah. This is a, a, a very important characteristic that must be emphasized, which you'll find amongst the people of deviance, is that they avoid dealing with the evidence, or they distort the evidences, instead of taking them back to the pristine sources of the Quran and the Sunnah, and how the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, you'll hear statements from them like, well, in this time we... Well, you know, today it's not uh, useful to, or things like this. You'll find them making excuses of why not to practice the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. So this is the first characteristic we need to be aware of and to be aware of. The second characteristic is that Ahl al-Bid'ah, you see that they follow their desires or their opinions. And they do this instead of following sound knowledge which is taken from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. For example, when you ask someone, some of the people who, when I first became Muslim, there was a man, he brought me to his home, he turned off the lights, and he said, mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name 100 times. And I thought to myself, that is this that the religion that I, I, I've just accepted? Because this doesn't feel right. This isn't what I, I signed up to, to become a part of. Turning off the lights, sitting with a man in the in the in the night, and you know chanting. I didn't believe that this was Islam, and there is no possible way that individual would be able to take that and show us evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or the statements and actions of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for that action. So instead, this is according to his desire and according to his his marid and his sheikh and his imam who taught him these things and he failed to ask questions on where these actions came from. You'll also find things like uh, many of the people of desires, they will, you'll, you'll see that they have some people who are marid, they call them, who are like imams for uh, certain Sufi sects and groups and individuals. So these people will hold these people in such high esteem that it goes to the, to the action of worship. And you'll find some of these individuals taking advantage of Muslim women that are especially new converts. And so we're saying, hey, this is a part of your obedience to Allah, is that you have relations with your marid. That he is not in sin when he cohabits with you and with you and with you without marriage. Or you'll see that they are drinking wine and alcohol, which is clearly prohibited from the Quran and the Sunnah. And this is something which is known as ma'lum in adin bi durora. That this is something which is known through the by necessity in the religion of Islam. Meaning, even non-Muslims, no Muslims are not allowed to drink alcohol. This is just a well-known thing. Muslims don't eat pork and they don't drink alcohol. This is something that uh, even non-Muslims know when they think of Muslims. So a person who makes this lawful is a person of desires and a person to be avoided at all costs. The third characteristic you'll find in the people of, uh, of deviance who have deviated from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, is that they have a dislike and a, in, a type of enmity for the people of Aqidah wa Ittiba, meaning the people who hold to the belief system that the Prophet ﷺ transmitted to us and that was transmitted from the Qur'an and that was held and a part of the consensus of the Sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنهم اجمعين. So for example, you'll hear them say, oh, 
beware of those individuals because they believe like this, meaning that they believe and affirm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed them for himself. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed, affirmed those attributes, names and attributes, according to the authentic sunnah. So we believe, for example, Ahl sunnah believes, Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa. We believe that. Allah said he did that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about himself that the most, uh, the most merciful rose above his throne. So we don't change it according to our desires. A change it according to our intellectual uh, disposition, our particular disposition. This person understands it to mean this. This person understands it to mean that. My imam understands it to mean this. No. Ahlul Sunnah, they hold on to it. They believe it as the Prophet ﷺ transmitted it and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transmitted it through the Quran. And we don't go beyond that. We stop where the evidence leads us. And this is the trait of Ahlul Sunnah. They stop with the evidence. Whereas Ahla, the people of innovation, they will distort those things and they have an animosity. And they reject the people of Aqidah. You'll hear them speaking about them. And they will ridicule even the scholars of Ahla Sunnah and those people who try to practice the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, hey, that's not useful in this time and day age. Or those people are still backwards because they're doing this. But we embrace a, democ- a new democratic ideology. This is complete falsehood and goes against the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. So I ask, I invite myself and those who are listening to come back to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. The fourth characteristic of Ahl Bid'ah is that they also, you'll see that they involve themselves when there's fitna and there's trial. You'll hear the people who, a lot of extremists saying, hey, there's war going on here, we're going to go fight. Anytime there's a chance to raise the gun, or they will choose to raise the gun, even on their own accord, establishing what they call jihad, or what they call suicide missions. Or they don't call them suicide missions, they say uh, uh, martyrdom missions. You'll see these people following their desires, and involving themselves any time they can find conflict, and if they can't find conflict, they will make conflict. This is the characteristic of the people of desires in Bid'ah, not the people of Ahlul Sunnah. This has never been the case. This was not the methodology of the Prophet Wasallam when it came to fighting jihad for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They did not uh, fight against the Muslim leaders, and they did not believe in uh, terrorism and, and so forth. But it was an honorable thing to raise the uh, kalim of Allah. The, the, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the religion of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not that for the sake of our desires, in accordance with the imam of the Muslims. So, Ahlul Bid'ah, you'll see that they involve themselves anytime they can with fitna. And you'll see that they all also divide themselves from the main body of Muslims. And you'll find this prevalent all over the Muslim world. You have Akhwana Muslimin, for example, that they have the secret bayah. And you'll have many groups that we have in the West, especially America, who have the secret bayah. And I've seen it with my own eyes on how that bayah tear, tears apart the main body of Muslims. Why? Because you'll have an in, a group of individuals in a particular mosque, and they have the bayah to their leader. Their leader doesn't like a few individuals in the community, so their whole community leaves them for the sake of their leader. Instead of having love and hate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have their uh, love based upon their leader, what he says, and his bayah. Or if their leader has a problem with another community, then they buy, it, it, it even falls down to Muslims having violence amongst them and between them. And this is exactly what the uh, the author is mentioning because he says well, خروج على جماعة, that you see that Ahl Bidah that they go away from the main body of Muslims and how much more can you go away from the main body of Muslims by separating yourself and, call, and, and beginning a new group or a new sect or a new jama'ah a jama'ah based upon your particular leader and the way you and your leader have established a, a certain ideology and so forth Another characteristic of Ahl Bid'ah, which relates to that, is that they have Hizbiyah Dayyipah, that they have a very restricted 
group mentality, mentality or partisanship, meaning that their love is restricted to their, those particular individuals in their sect, in their ideology. And they will quickly make declare other Muslims to be innovators or to be disbelievers outright. And we've seen this with a lot of the sects, especially the tech, neo tech theory groups, who anyone who disagreed with them was a disbeliever in their eyes. And this goes back to who? What ideology? That of the original, the first sect in Islam, the Khawarij. And the Prophet ﷺ said about them what? Al Khawarij Kilab al Nar. He said that the Khawarij are the dogs of the hellfire. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you'll see this characteristic of the people of innovation is that they restrict themselves to a particular sect or a particular ideology. And they love and hate in accordance with their ideology. If you don't believe in going to the graves like we do and having graves under our masjid or praying in, in places which we believe the dead saints prayed in or Prophet so-and-so prayed in this spot and so we're going to make this a new spot or we're going to celebrate the Prophet's birthday. If you go against them and their ideology and belief system, you'll find that they don't have any love for you. So this characteristic is that Ahl al-Bidah is they break themselves from the main body of Muslims into particular groups and sects. And they make their love and their hate in accordance with their ideology or their sect. Meaning if you're outside of their sect, they don't have any love for you. Wallah and may Allah protect us from that. Ameen. And another characteristic of Ahl al-Bidah is that they also do not give importance to the belief system of monotheism and spreading it and loving for the sake of it and disliking the enemies who oppose it and hate it and hate the Muslims. So Ahl al-Bidah instead they will say, hey, I already know Tawheed. We don't need to call to Tawheed anymore. Or Tawheed is just a small part of the religion. What's important is establishing the prayer only. Or what's important is, 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 is establishing a Khalifa only. Or what's important is establish the Sharia in such and such country. This is the most important matter. No. Every single thing I just mentioned, those are all wasa'in. Those are all means to establish Tawheed. They're all means to establish Tawheed. Because why? What is the purpose of life? Is the purpose of life to have a Khalifa? Is the purpose of life to have jihad everywhere? Is the purpose of life to, to have graves under the masjid? No. The purpose of life is what? As the Prophet, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ لِلِي عَبُدُونَ I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping. This is the purpose of creation. This is why you and I are here. And this is the call. This is the call in Islam. That this is what we should be concerned ourselves with propagating. And loving the people who propagate this. And helping and assisting the people who propagate this with our wealth, our time, and our property. Why? Because... This is propagating true Islam. And loving for that reason. Loving the people of Tawheed. Loving them for that. Not loving them because they are from your uh, particular race or tribe or nationality. No. But instead, you will be able to tell from all the groups out there and all the sectarianism that we find in our community, Wallahu Musta'an, may Allah rectify our condition and affairs, you'll find that there will always be a group that is focusing on calling to correcting the beliefs. Calling to the correct aqidah, the correct creed in Islam. Calling to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His names and attributes, His divine names and attributes, by uh, His Lordship, and calling to the worship of Him and Him alone, subhanahu this, there will always be a group. As the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تزل طائفة من أمتي ضالين على حق He said, there won't cease to be a group from amongst my community that is open on the, on the truth. There will always be them. They will always be there. So find them. Look for those individuals who are always, you see that they're showing the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and they're calling to what the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ called to and what his companions called to. And what all the prophets before called to, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that we've sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and stay away from those things which are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this shows us that that is the goal. 
and you want to love Ahlul Tawheed, don't be like the Hizbi organizations and groups and sects who disregard calling to Aqidah. They say, hey, we can unite on anything and we don't have to call to the Quran and the Sunnah and the worship of Allah alone. We can unite with grave worshippers. We can re reunite with those people who love people like Habib and Jeffrey, this person who calls to grave worship and calls to making tawassal to the dead. Come on. What kind of Islam is this? That you that is permissible to call on the dead? Just think about that with your intellect. Then go to the Quran and the Sunnah and please come with the evidences. Those people like Zaytuna Institute, like Hamza Yusuf and Abdul Karim and all these other people who who call to this, who tell people to go to Hadramaut and study in these places. Billah. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear Allah and show me in the Quran and the Sunnah where it's permissible to make tawassal to the dead. How in the world can you go to a dead man? This is how the Catholics do. The Catholics do this. Islam is free from that. And so I invite my brothers and sisters to come back to the Quran and the Sunnah and stay away from those evil beliefs. Because that is not the call to Tawheed, that's the call to Shirk. That's the call to Catholicism. To have an intercessor. We don't need an intercessor. Our deeds, our good deeds can be intercessors for us. Seeking knowledge is an intercession for us. Calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His divine names and attributes, that's intercession for us. But not calling on the dead. And not calling even the Prophet sallallahu We can't say, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa please make my wife pregnant. O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa please increase my risk. No. That's shirk. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself said, what? He said, a dua huwa ibadah. He said, in this collected in Tirmidhi and it's sahih, that supplication is worship. So if you supplicate to the dead, you're worshipping the dead. There's no, no matter how they try to explain it away, be careful, ayu al muslimun. So Ahlul Sunnah calls the Tawheed and Ahlul Bid'ah, they call you and they belittle the importance of Tawheed. So watch those individuals. And the last characteristic we want to be cautious of, that is a characteristic and trait of the people of innovation, is that they follow the general and ambiguous statements that you might find in the Quran or in the Sunnah, or the opinions that are very, uh, very rare and strange opinions. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَأْتَبِعُونَ مَا تَشَبَّهَ مَا تَشَبَّهَ مِنْهُ وَابْتِغَاءَ الْفِئْنَةِ وَابْتِغَاءَ تَعْوِيلِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the Almighty says, and as for those whose, whose hearts has uh, you know, has misguidance, then they follow the ambiguous things. And, and the reason they follow it, men whom ibtigha al fitness, some of them they follow those, the general verses and statements uh, in the Quran in order to have fitna, in order to have, uh, 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 you know, to establish chaos in the land. And another group that and another group seeks to distort and change and misinterpret the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fit their own desires, to fit their own practices, to fit their own uh, deviance and misguidance. And two examples of this. For the examples of the first part of the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, minhu ibtigha al fitna. They desire fitna. Those are the people that you see, those extremists. They say, hey, they try to convince the people that they're restoring the, the izza and the, the, the position of Islam and the honor of Islam. So they do terrorist acts in the name of Islam. Why? Because they desire fitna. And they believe, some of them, they believe that what they're doing is bringing them closer to Allah. But in fact, this is their distortion because this is not Islamic jihad. Killing innocent people, blowing up things, blowing up yourself, suicide bombings, and more often not even in the lands of the Muslims. More, most of those people in Al-Qaeda, they kill more Muslims than anyone else. They've got a huge track record. And why is this? Is because they ibtiqa al-fitna. And they also use the verses to substantiate. They'll use some of the verses, but they'll leave the sunnah which explains those verses. And they'll leave the books of fiqh, which explains how to conduct proper jihad. But instead they believe in distorting the principles 
of Islam to fit their desires and to cause harm. وَعِيَادًا لِلَّهِ So this is a characteristic of the people of desires and innovation is that they distort the general statements from the Qur'an and they also will take the rare, rare, strange opinions. For example, they'll say, Hey, Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah ta'ala, said music was halal, it's halal. Or is it, Ibn Hazm had the statement that when you want to get married, you know, a very, very strange, strange opinion that is rejected by the consensus of the ummah. So the people of desires will follow that rare opinion, even though it's not substantiated by the evidences. It was a mistake by that great alam, that great scholar of jurisprudence. May Allah have mercy upon him. But we don't follow anyone in their mistakes. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and forgive me for all my mistakes. Anything I said that was correct is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect is from myself and the Prophet.